Welcome back to Style with Sana's Premium. This is our second project we are going to be doing together. And this project is significant because it's a huge house with so much to do in it. However, we did not get the clearance and confirmation to go ahead and do a lot of the things I would have liked, like painting, replacing light fixtures, and just really freshening up the house with basic deep cleaning. So we had to improvise and make our staging do the magic and we did such a wonderful job. So join us and see what's to come. Good morning, guys. We are here at a consultation. I've collaborated with an amazing agent I work with for a few years now, Aaron Lovespring. He's from Barry Cohen Homes. I'm so excited to show you this property. All I heard was that it's in Toronto's one of the most prestigious neighborhoods, and I already got excited. And now I'm even more excited because inside, I'm sure, is full of goodies. Let's go have a look inside. So we got the call about a week ago and he did say it was a little bit of a rush job. So I don't imagine a lot being done in the house, but we're gonna be fully staging it. So let's go take some notes and see what we can do. Oh, it's chilly out there, guys. Gotta layer up this season now. This is so nice. Oh my goodness, I love this property. All right, so we are setting in the front foyer right now. And what I'm seeing is already that it's a little bit dark in here. The walls are a little bit warmer tone, which is nice. There's nothing wrong with it. But I mean, there isn't a lot of natural light coming in. So we're gonna have to bring in some pieces that are light and bright and airy. So starting with the front foyer, this system has to go. I wanna do a nice console table here maybe a mirror, do a piece of art. So guys, when you come to a consultation, you need to make notes of stuff like this where there's scuff marks on the walls and you know that the client is not painting. You're gonna have to make sure you cover this up because as you can see, more little drill holes in here, drill bits. So you know someone was living here previously. The homeowners do not wanna take the cost right now at the present moment also because there isn't much timing they want me to stage this right away in an ideal world you would have control over everything and you could do whatever you want to make this house perfect for the big day but it's not an ideal world and some people are on a budget or a time restriction and in this case it was really holding us back so I have my camera. I'm gonna start taking photos. This is our office and wow, I love this. These are really nice warm tones in this house. So away from the whites and the gray. So we have to be mindful of that when we're choosing our pieces for here. So I'm gonna take photos of every angle. Now I have to say there's a lot of bookshelves here. So we're gonna to have to cover most of this up with accessories. And then obviously the placement of the furniture. You have two light pendants hanging here. So desk is definitely going to go underneath this with our chair, office chair be just behind it. And I want to do, this is a great size room. So I want to do two accent chairs here in the window. Nothing big or bulky, airy, maybe an accent table, some kind of focal piece in the window here to show it off. This is such a nice office. I love this. I would love to work in this office space. So all I know is this house is going for about $7 million. It's a nice one. So we're gonna have to fill it up with some nice pieces. This is our gorgeous living room. Just gonna take some photos of every angle that I see. So that once I'm looking at the big picture, I can see all of it. I can see this wall, I can see this wall, and I can see this corner. So already I know what's gonna happen in here. We're gonna do a nice size sofa, coffee table, maybe two accent chairs here with an accent table, couple accent tables there, uh, decorative pillows, accessories, nice mirror. I would have loved to have removed these guys. They're a little bit dated. But again, I don't think they're going to because they don't have time for it and we're not gonna be touching up the wall. So these guys will probably stay. 
Wow, look at this dining room. This, I mean, all of you guys that love the traditional look, this is like your dream house. Mine too. I mean, it's a beautiful setting. High ceilings. This is such a nice bonus in a property to have ceiling height between nine and 10 is just ideal. This is 10 for sure, because then they have the nice coffered ceiling with the details of the moldings. And I'm sure there's a lighting system going on inside of here. No, no. I guess homes don't come with instructions of where to find your lights. So it's always like a little treasure hunt going around trying to figure out where the lights are because you don't want dark photos. You want nice and bright so you see all the details. So make sure when you go around, you turn on all the lights, even if it's a challenge finding them. So if this was a design house, we'd have like rope lighting inside, LED lighting. We're going to do a rectangle table here, eight chairs. Seems pretty standard. Nice light colored rug. Again, we should go a little bit lighter just because we want to lighten and brighten up the space. And then this over here, it caught my eye from that side of the room. But what is this? I don't like it. Why do I do with this? It was like a stab in my heart when I walked into that room and I saw that on the wall because I knew there was no budget to remove it and fix it up. So we had to make do with it and we did. If this is not coming off the wall, I'm sure. And I am not about to put little accessories in here to dress this up. What would they have even used this for? I can't even, this is not even like a base for shelving, for shelving to come out. We're going to have to cover this. Maybe a console table here and then like plop on an art, not on the wall, but on the console to lean on this and cover this because this is just a disaster and I don't want to show this. Not staging that. We're staging over that. Okay, I'll take my photos and we'll go to the next room. Okay, well, this is like the, the main area, the hallway area leading upstairs. I love the staircase. I feel like there's a lot of, you know, nice character to it. What I don't like about it though is this runner. Take a look at this. This baby has got to go. So in my ideal world, I would have had time on this project and I would have said, hey guys, let's have this replaced because it's so dated and ugly and I would have got my guys to come in, give us a quote and we would have had this replaced. But in this world, uh, we can't do that because we don't have time. So we're going to have to work with this bad boy. So now I'm thinking bring in some black elements and just try to modernize it with some really cool accessories and artwork. It's got to stay for the next people unless they decide to remove it themselves. So this was the area that Aaron warned me about. He said there are a lot of empty spaces that need to be filled up. Now this could be considered quite a dead space because you would consider it just a hallway if you didn't stage this. People walking through would think, huh, this is a very wide hallway. What do I do with this? Well, being a stylist of properties, obviously you know what to do with it because now you look at this space, you analyze it and you see, well, I have about 24 inches on this side that has you know, some wall space where I can put a nice sideboard or a cabinet. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Obviously, we're not going to leave this area bare. So I'm going to do a nice, good size uh, sideboard here. Put out some artwork. Definitely need to put something here. Oh my goodness. This wall looks like it just came from a war zone. It was such a disaster. I mean, you guys cannot even see the details on that wall, but it was just holes and holes everywhere. Like somebody just went art crazy or photo crazy all over that wall. And unfortunately, we couldn't cover it with paint. So you have to make sure when you're in a situation like that, that you use either a few pieces of art or one large piece to cover up the whole wall. I don't know if you guys can see all these details, but we need to repair this. Well, not repair this, but cover this. We need to cover it with artwork and mirrors. So that's going to go in the plan. And I'm going to take some photos of this so that I know exactly what I'm doing on packing day. I love this. You have French doors leading into your own private area. So this is the family room slash kitchen breakfast area. And I really like how they did this in this house. I mean, again, it is a little bit more of a transitional house. And these doors are so fitting to have because it gives complete privacy to this area of the house. 
Certain key characteristics like French doors will definitely be a good indication for you to decide which way you want to take the design and aesthetics. If it's more modern, it's more transitional or more traditional. These doors automatically tell me that I'm dealing with a transitional slash traditional property. If nothing else gives you a hint, something like this will. So keep your eyes open for little details that will distinguish which way, which path you want to take your design. Is it modern, contemporary, transitional, or traditional? Now, for this space here, we have ample amount of seating space. I mean, anybody coming in here looking at it empty might think, well, what would I do with this space? There's such irregular walls or where would I put my sofa? Well, it's totally clear because we're going to do our sofa on this wall, our love seat on this wall. And the reason I'm not doing the sofa on this wall is if these doors were not here, I would have done the sofa here, but with the doors here, you need a little bit more room just in case people want to try opening and closing the doors. You don't want to be blocking anything. So safe thing to do is put the sofa here, love seat here, nice big coffee table, couple accent chairs here. We need artwork and I mean light colored artwork because all of these walls, it's like an olivey color wall. I don't know if the color is coming out on the video, but it's like an olivey khaki color. So we're going to have to warm this up with warmer neutrals. So not cool neutrals, warm neutrals. Love the mantle. Again, such character, adds so much character to the, to the space here. And I imagine just not having anything here, you know, this just adds so much. And the next people can even put in like built-in shelving and stuff or whatever. Okay, so now we're spe stepping into the kitchen breakfast area. I mean, again, this is one of those properties that I'm not going to get to show you replacing light fixtures and how I would do it. I'll definitely make sure that the next property that comes around that we do replace lights, you guys will be included in that process. But something like this to me has got to go. We're going to leave it just because we're not making any changes to the property itself. But in an ideal world, I would have replaced this. I mean, look at the beautiful view you have with your gorgeous bay window here. Could have done something really nice and elegant over your table, which we're going to do a round one with five or six chairs. Let's see what we can fit. Now I'm going to say something. The vibe of this house, again, is transitional, traditional. So we're going to have to make it a little bit more contemporary. So what I'm thinking is bring in some of those natural elements that are really, you know, popular right now. A lot of raw materials, black accents, even for the kitchen, because we have the dark countertop that we cannot replace. I can accent this with black. So instead of doing chrome or any other finish here, I'm going to do black because I don't want it to be another pop on top of what's going on and make it look super busy. I'm going to minimalize all of the different details and information that's going on here with very neutral bar stools that kind of just blend in and you don't even really see them, but they will accent if we have in stock, because I know I'm dreaming right now of all these different things I want to do in here, but you also have to check your inventory to see what you have available. So I'm picturing black chairs here, black bar stools, you know, a lot of raw materials in the kitchen and just make it look more contemporary than it is right now. This is definitely one of those pointers that you need to be taking notes of because you will come across properties that sometimes do not need to be overly staged, but they need to be understaged. So you need to blend in and neutralize the space as much as you can. So a key thing like this, like the island being dark colors, you don't want to add more information to that space because it already looks like there's so much going on with that transitional look. You want to make it look more... Uh, simplify it. So if you can't beat it, join it. I love the staircase again, but something else that I see here that I don't love is the curtains. And again, it's not one of those things that we can change right now. And I don't want to leave the house without curtains because it is almost like a add on to the house if they're selling the house with the curtains. But again, in an ideal world, they wouldn't exist. They wouldn't be here. And I would have big open windows just showing off the ceiling and allowing the natural light to kind of come in through this staircase here. But it's a lovely space. 
Oh my goodness, look at this nook. I love this. Look at this setting. This is so sweet. I now feel like I'm in like a country house somewhere far, far away. We got to dress this up really nicely. I'm thinking maybe like a little settee or something in the window. A couple cute pillows, maybe a little table beside it. Create like a little reading nook. I love this. Look at this vaulted ceiling with a light fixture. So, I mean, like the light here looks cute. We'll leave it. Not that we have a choice, but I like this. This is definitely a spot that we're gonna stage. Well, double doors to the primary bedroom is always a nice idea. And wow, look at this bedroom. I love this bedroom. I mean, seriously, I still get butterflies when I walk into certain properties and homes and I see these rooms and I'm like, oh my God, so dreamy. This bedroom was definitely one of them. So spacious and bright, beautiful someone's whole apartment like I have to say this this is huge all right Ugh, what a gorgeous light fixture I mean for a traditional setting this is so beautiful it needs to be clean though guys so one of the other things you need to think about when you're going to a consultation is look at the details of the trims the countertops light fixtures like these that have kind of like an opaque kind of look that means it's dirty. It's kind of like smoky looking. You need to get someone to come and do a deep clean on these. You want to make it look nice and not new, but you know, presentable and clean. Definitely consider cleaning for your projects, whether it's before staging or after. Uh, deep clean is always a good idea. We've done a couple of videos with, with our cleaners there as well. You guys have seen. So here we're going to do the king headboard, obviously on this wall. Don't want to do it on this wall because I feel like it'll cut the room from whoever's walking in that way. So we'll keep it on this wall. So when you walk in from here, the space looks nice and open and this kind of becomes like a feature wall. So if I build my room around this, I put my headboard, two nightstands, I'll have my bed come out to about here. Then I have all of that space there to do something with and that's obviously going to be a sitting area. So what I'm thinking is let's do a love seat in front of the bed, do a nice coffee table in front, an accent chair in this corner, maybe even an accent table beside it. So when you walk in this way, you see some furniture setting and then you walk in, you see the sofa, coffee table, boom, 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 boom and it's done. I like it. <laughs> so one of the other details that this house has is some drapery. So we're going to leave this because this is always a good idea to have and they're blackout, which is fantastic. But other than that, I'm going to suggest to the realtor to definitely have the windows clean because when you step stand here and you look outside, you don't want to be seeing dirt. I mean, it's fall season, lots of rain and snow happening. So we want to make sure that our windows are nice and clean looking and the doors. So I'm going to put that in my notes for interior cleaning exterior window cleaning and also I see here that we have a lot of um, damage on the walls I guess there was a tv up here at some point and they've put on some caulking so we're gonna have to put a mirror or something decorative here dress up the mantle to cover this up and also this area so there's a lot of artwork we're gonna need a lot of artwork and I'm gonna take my photo so that I know exactly where the artwork needs to go from the day of consultation until the day that we started packing, it took about a two week break because our client had to postpone the staging. And this might happen to you sometimes, but if the house is on the market already and you're staging it, they might get an offer and you have to be aware that something like this might happen. Now you can be the stager that says, okay, you cancel me, you owe me this much. Or you can be the stager that says to your regular client, that's okay. Hope you have a great sale. Hope the sale goes through and we'll work on the next one together. So you want to empower them. You want to make them feel like you are part of their team. You're not apart from their team. I'm so excited to get started on this project because I have to tell you, we have a lot to cover. A few of the tools that we need to get started on the packing process is our list of items that's going to the house. And that consists of each room being separated into sections with a list of items. And then we have our tablet, which holds all of our inventory. And I'll go through that process 
choose from here, mark it on the master list so the guys have a backup list if one or the other gets confusing or one gets missed. And then I obviously need reference, so I have my camera, which holds all of the photos of this project that we took at the consultation. And I need my green tape because I need to be marking all of the pieces that are going, and I like to mark them by the room, and a trusty pen. So let's get started. So what I like to do is put everything down. The front foyer is at the front of the house and then we have our living room and dining room to the right. And I really wanted to make this space a showstopper. What I thought was the wall space that we have is not so big that you can put whatever piece you want, like something like this. So we have to stay within that little confined space that we have. I was thinking we go for our honeycomb console table here you guys can probably see a little bit of it from this side but it's kind of like that pewtery gold it's not such like a dark gold and i just come onto my tablet and i'll just tap that so now i know this is selected for my foyer area so when the team goes through and they're trying to see what furniture i've selected they literally just go on the foyer and they'll see that this is our console table so then what i do is i put the first letter actually a little bit more because we do have a family room too if you put two f's then they're not going to know which space so i'll put f-o-y-e-r foyer and i'll stick it on my console table so when they come and see the tablet yes it's selected here yes it's select selected on our master list and yes we have a green tape on it indicating which room it's going to go and that's just really going to speed up the process when you get to the stage because then when they're offloading they look at the tag and they automatically know this is living room this is family room and it'll go straight into that space and you're going to avoid any kind of clutter. So I know in the world of technology these days, there's so many advanced versions of doing this, like for example, using barcodes. However, I found that when we were going through the process of putting all of our pieces in the inventory, having barcode stickers on every item would make it difficult in the future because these things are constantly being moved around, saran wrapped, and they'll easily come off within, you know, two to three projects. And then you got to upkeep of what's missing a barcode so for me that process didn't work because it would just add more work that's why we decided to do the green tape where it's like a stick and go every project it goes on it comes off once it gets staged and it's ready for your the next time that you want to sticker it for its new destination so now our foyer is complete we picked our console table I want to move on to the living room and my setup is actually a sofa with two accent chairs is what I was thinking at the consultation. But now that I'm reassessing my photo and the space I have, I feel like I wanna do a chaise instead of two accent chairs because sometimes two accent chairs can be a little bit, I would say sparse looking and the spaces are gonna look empty. And keep in mind, it's a, a 6,000 square foot house. So you wanna have substantial pieces. I pick this lovely piece over here and it's our chaise. And I like the fact that it's armless and it's backless. And at the same time, it's substantial enough that it's going to look like it fits there. So here it is. And voila, this is our baby coming with us tomorrow. I love this piece. It's such a versatile piece. And that's why I say, guys, when you're shopping for furniture, make sure it's something versatile that you can use in multiple properties and have it look like it actually belongs there. And this is one of those. So it's armless, it's backless, and we're going to put it with the arm against the fireplace side with the accent table beside it. So again, it's not as bulky looking as having another sofa in front of a sofa because of our confined space. And it's not going to be as empty looking as having two accent chairs and a sofa the chaise is the perfect piece for it okay so now we have our main pieces ready for the living room now for the fun pieces yes our accent tables we need a coffee table and we need three end tables for this living room just because of the layout we need one extra end table and i thought to do our brass rectangle end table which i saw somewhere around here actually it's been tucked away really really nicely where i can't even find it anymore do, 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 do. oh found it right here so we're gonna tape our brass rectangle coffee table and now we need three end tables hold on i can't think and write at the same time <laughs> our end tables for the living room 
I actually have the perfect pieces for it. Come on this side with me. Tuck, tuck. Here we go. These are my end tables. They actually have a really nice bronzy brass finish on top with the black legs. So the theme is brass, but not like a bright brass. We're going with like a darker aged brass because this house is more like, I would say transitional. So, and I wanna steer more towards contemporary. So I don't wanna do anything too flashy. I wanna bring in some of the black elements and kind of bring in the raw materials. Steer it a little bit more towards the contemporary look versus traditional. And I'm so glad that we did that and went more towards the contemporary because it really lightened up the house. I mean, can you imagine in a transitional traditional house putting in more bulky furniture? It just would not be giving the right look to the buyers because remember, you want nine out of 10 people walking into the property to love it and want it. So you got to do what's trending. So guys, I know that once you get in the process, of choosing stuff you can get all carried away and just start tagging everything and marking everything do not forget that you need to be writing down your list of what is it that you're taking so just simple details so if I pick that white marble top end table for my living room I'm gonna write the name of that white marble top end table because either you have it in your tablet where it's named or you give a brief description round white table marble with brass legs and then you sticker it so they know which one it is and we're going to do that right now we have such a beautiful dining room to style here and you got to remember because it's right beside the living room you want to make sure your pieces are nice and uniform so what i'm thinking is since there's a lot of wood in the space i feel like we shouldn't do a wood table versus go with a glass top table so i'm going to go over here where all all my glasses and I'm going to choose the largest glass table I have is a 96 inch with a chrome base we're going to do this one with really nice chairs to go with our living room space so I wish I had my dining chairs here to show you, but I don't because my team is at a pickup right now. And this is the importance of having a tablet with all of your inventory in it because I just returned that project into my inventory. So now that I'm picking for tomorrow, I know those chairs are coming back and I can select them. Even though I cannot see them here, I'm gonna select it on here. I'm gonna put it down on my pad of paper. They just will not have it tagged and that's okay because they have a photo, they have a description. If they obviously have any questions, myself or the other stager can clarify which piece is going. So guys, I picked these square back chairs because it's a white linen fabric very clean looking and again if you remember from the consultation the walls are a little bit darker so I want to do really light chairs to just open up the space and make it nice and airy so these are perfect they have black legs and everything is very neutral because they actually go with this table in the photo chrome base glass top white chairs black legs nice light colored rug we need a console table for in there some artwork accessories and we have a whole room styled Okay, so now we are in the artwork slash lamp room. There's a lot going on here, but I have a vision in mind. I'm thinking beside the sofa in the living room, we need two lamps. So let's choose something for that. And maybe we can go, hmm. I mean, there's a lot of variety here. There's so many different styles. Like you have modern, you have very traditional contemporaries, you know, that you have these cool ones. I love these for bedrooms. But I, I kind of have my eye on this one, which is a light gray with a little bit of a gold top. Or I'm thinking, why don't we go really cool and do these bad boys or bad girls? <laughs> it's like a kind of like a modern marble finish and I think these are the really cool ones that have that no not these ones I have another one that the light turns on from the inside it illuminates the stone so you, it warms it up really nicely not these guys but I think these ones are really nice for the living room and I do have this one as well that I love but its partner is out at another project and I don't want to do one piece I feel like I want to do two pieces there we do need a lot of light and that's the other thing you got to consider how light is your space and our space is not so light because one, we don't have a lot of natural light and two, our sconces that are on the walls are so dated and they didn't want to change it. So I don't want to bring more attention to them. So I'm going to put lamps in, brighten up the space, make it look nice and neutral and then on to the next space. 
These are really important pointers here and I hope you guys are taking notes because you know by now that lighting is everything in a room. So if you do not have the good lighting, like for example, there's dark walls on the wall, for example, if there's dark paint on the wall or they don't have light fixtures like pot lights or a center light, you want to make sure you take floor lamps, table lamps, because you want your space to be as bright as possible. So one of the things that really get forgotten when people are styling homes or even just doing their own home is the lampshade. I know it seems like such a irrelevant piece to worry about, but guys, it makes such a difference in your setting. And I'll tell you this, the first mistake is people do not consider the height of their table lamp. So if your lamp is like ours, which is a pretty tall one, you still want to consider your lampshade to be somewhere around just finishing off the top of your lamp because you do not want this neck area to be showing. So you definitely want to be somewhere that this is fully covered and I see that ours is and it looks nice and beautiful and you could even go taller or longer so it comes a little bit lower but I feel like this is a good size because our room again we don't have a lot of natural light and our setting is a little bit more confined so I want to do something that kind of goes with the rest the scale should not be overbearing let's put it that way you want it to be something that's subtle but yeah it looks good again it's just lampshades but you wanted to make sure that it fits your lamp all right, so as I came in this room, I already knew that for my office, I need a floor lamp. And the reason for this is the office is quite a large office and I feel like I want to warm it up a lot and I want to make it look nice and comfy and cozy. So given it's a large space, we want to put in some extra pieces. So a floor lamp will definitely do the job. It follows through with all of the finishes in the house. It's nice and clean looking and we'll, I'm not sure, either put it in the window area or by the desk and the accent chair. So this one's coming with. So we usually have designated areas for our stuff that's going out and this is the area I'm choosing for tomorrow's stage and it's tucked away in a corner so when stuff's coming in today from the pickup nothing will get injured, nothing will get broken. I'm going to put everything here with green tape on them so the team knows this stuff is for tomorrow's project. And for my favorite part, accessorizing the rooms. This Everything leads down to this. You get all your furniture together and your lights together, and then you put in the fine little details. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. There's a lot to scout out because we have a full house that we need to accessorize. Now I know that I have like 16 bins coming back from my D stage today. So this is definitely going to get full again, but given what we have right now and what we want to do, let's start going through and start choosing our accessories. So you need to have a place where you can set everything down, put it together, play around with your pieces and really feel the vibe and what you want to put out there. So the intention for this room was to lighten it up and we do have some black accents in there. So on my coffee table that is glass with brass frame, I thought to bring in all of those elements. So we have a large black coffee table book, put another one beside it, carrying the same color. So it has the black, it has the white, has some gold, brown, light wood details, which reflect off that gold tone we're trying to set the mood for. Then I'll put in a vase because this is a formal living room. We do have 10 foot ceilings. So I don't want to keep all of the items on my coffee table too small and, you know, kind of cluttered looking. I want larger pieces. I want more substantial pieces. My vase here again has all of the same tones that I have in my coffee table books and then I put in some flowers. Now you can go crazy with your flowers. You can put as many as you want. I ended up using three branches here. I'm going to take in a couple more with me just in case you know on styling day you never know what happens. You might need an extra one. So make sure you take it with you because you don't want to be left stranded to come back for one branch. So I'm going to grab my flowers and I love these flowers because again they have all the tones I like and I need. The white tones, it's light colored, it's fresh looking. I'm going to steer away from using color because it might be a little bit too personal. I want to keep everything light. I want to keep everything white and neutral looking. Then I'll bring in some accents. So I'll have two of these vases that are not matching, different textured. One is lined and kind of has this like waistline. 
whereas this one is a little bit more chunky looking round white again natural elements steer away from too many metallics and too many metals go for that fresh look if you're going a little bit more contemporary even if you are setting up a transitional room you don't have to do everything in bling bling neutralize it so that nine out of ten that come into the house will love it my checklist is complete. We have all of the rooms covered, furniture, artwork, table lamps, accessories, bedding, decorative pillows, and everything in between that we need for tomorrow's project. Everybody's coming back very shortly. They're gonna offload what's coming back to the warehouse and then onload at least the first load for tomorrow. We do have two loads. Then we're on our way to stage tomorrow morning. See how it goes. All of the steps that we took was leading to this day. And guys, on staging day, you need to keep your energy up, 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 and up. Doesn't matter if you're doing one project that day or two projects that day. Because when we started this big project, it was already almost evening time. And everything went as smoothly as possible just because we were highly organized, had our list, had everything packed up, had everything in our inventory checked off, and we were golden. It's for upstairs, you know the white tray you put in the hallway? Just to just put that in there. And if you need that somewhere upstairs, you can fill it up too. All right. I know it's already dark and it looks like it's midnight, but it's actually not. It's about 5 p.m. We're wrapping up. There are some areas I want to go through and tweak, and I'll explain to you why. So let's start with our family room on this side. So just a couple more things to do. I know I'm gonna do a full home tour for you guys to see what's actually happened in here since the consultation and the packing day. But we have two end tables beside here and I'm going to position them so they're equally away from the sofa. And one of the things that we always wanna make sure, and I always see in a lot of photos for real estate is this line right here. So. We want to make sure little details are covered and the space look act, looks actually perfect. So, oh, found a wire. That could be dangerous for somebody taking a seat. So this is why it's important to do a final walkthrough when you're done with your space because things like this or, you know, imperfections in the room can kind of ruin the whole effort that you put into your space. So we've really neutralized this room with the furniture that we put in here. It looks really out of a magazine. The color coordinates between all the sofas, the area rug, the coffee table, and our artwork. If you remember at the consultation, this space was so dull and green and olive looking. And now it just looks really nice and uniform. Like as you can see, oh look, there is another nail here. Okay, found two. If you notice, everything kind of goes together. There is harmony between all of the fabrics and all of the colors we've used so that it doesn't get too busy. We don't need these ones. We might be able to use these somewhere I think okay. we don't have okay yeah grab one more bin finalizing all of the pieces so I'm taking away all the extras that I feel like because we always like to pack extras and it's good to do that because sometimes you don't have enough and sometimes you have too many so I see here that we do have too many but I don't want to leave this space bare so what I'm gonna do is maybe put this guy over here or maybe over here We'll put something like that because it's lot nice and long and it fills up this space. You don't want to leave empty spaces really and you don't want to do too much. So just focus on the main spaces and make sure they're covered. All of this is good. So we have some extras on this side. I noticed there's some bar stools that are not in place yet. So we can line these babies up and get this space done so what i like to do is start in a corner which is the end of the house and kind of go through kind of do with my magic wand a final sweep and out the door so that's what we're doing right now just making sure everything is in place so that we can turn off lights as we go and call these spaces completed so you want to make sure everything is nice and lined up it's nice to show four chairs instead of three i mean we could do three and actually maybe we should do three because four looks a little cramped even though this is a really big house the island is not so big and it's been taken up here with the side panels so i'm gonna have to take one bar stool back so let's go put this on the truck and see what's happening on this side because everything else looks great here put this guy in the dining room in that corner there by the door you need something there do you have a cutter alex 
Okay, let's cut this and get this out of the way too, so we can say the dining room is complete. You got it? Okay. okay. Can you take this to the dining, Alex, please? And just cut this one too, please. There's one more here. I believe to the back left corner by the door, right? Yeah, on the right, just behind the door right there. Perfect. Everyone's like, perfect. One thing out of the way. This has been a big project today. We have been here for a while. Let's go upstairs and have a look at the primary. All right, it looks so different here at nighttime. Just makes this house look so much more moody. I like it. This was our little reading nook, perfect. I feel like this was not for here. This was for somewhere downstairs. This was for family room. They all had tags, but somehow got lost. Round two. This is how you get your workout at projects. Go up and down the stairs, especially in heavy boots. Getting my workout. All right, so this is good. We're gonna put up our artwork and this is gonna be complete. I feel like I need another pillow or throw or something here just to kind of make it look a little bit more cozy. But yes, this is a very cute nook. Let's go to the primary. Yeah, it's good. Uh, Rada, we just need one either throw do you have a small white throw downstairs? Yeah. Or another pillow, like a color? Yeah. Well, either one of the two will be good. Just need something. Oh, I love this. Guys, don't you find it so hot? Rada, this looks amazing. Looks really good. Uh, you wanna put that white one there? Instead of this guy. Do you have any more books? We don't have any more books. Okay. So we put it like this and take this guy away then. It's white, I mean everything is neutral, but it's nice because the fireplace is dark. And I feel like this guy needs to move up a little bit. Okay, the black and the white, this looks good. The artwork is gonna go up. Okay, so the reason that I'm shifting some of the furniture around is when you're standing in this space and you see that you have a sitting area here, and yet such a wide open space until you get to your accent chair. Don't tuck your accent chair in the corner because then you're creating more space. Bring it in a little bit so it shows that it is part of this sitting space, but at the same time, you're not leaving that corner empty because if you remember at our consultation, there are some wires there. And also when you come in from where you are and this is your view, you do wanna see the accent chair. You do not wanna see the legs of the chair. You wanna actually see the chair and it's by the fireplace and it's still part of your love seat area over here. So so making final adjustments is really important. So when you stage a room, don't just put, put, put and leave and done. Do another walkthrough, make sure everything is in place and where it's supposed to be, like I'm doing right now. <laughs> okay, any other questions? <laughs> okay, so are these two are our chosen pieces for the headboard wall. And the reason that I wanted to do such large pieces over the headboard is that we do have really high ceilings here and our headboard is not so tall. So it's nice to elevate this wall a little bit more. I mean, you could do two pieces on the side here. I would do that if my ceiling was a little bit lower or if my headboard was a little bit taller. However, my headboard is on the lower side. So I really wanna elevate this and make this look really like a like a create a wow factor when you come in here so you're actually also showing the ceiling height when you do that because if you didn't have artwork here the ceiling would kind of get lost with the height of the wall but it's covert ceiling here so you want to show that off still unwrapping but it's so important to wrap guys because you want to keep your inventory long term you better get stuff like this, like saran wrap, commercial style saran wrap, not the household saran wrap. And you wrap up your frames because we do spend a lot of money on these. And little nicks like this in your artwork, creating damage is not so good. So you wanna prevent that at all costs. So wrap up your art, it goes in the truck, it comes in the homes, it goes back to the warehouse. You wanna make sure it's protected and that you can use it for long term. All right, and we have our bathroom here that we accessorized, perfect. Still have one piece of art to go up. So our artwork is gonna go up on this wall here. Again, it's such a pretty bathroom, but it just needs some life added to it. So we made it very spa looking, put white towels everywhere, especially like when you have a jacuzzi like this, it's nice to really accessorize it 
put some natural looking flowers, you know, you have your towels and good, this is good. I actually feel like I brought this for this side of the wall. I'm not gonna use it because I feel like this piece right here is already really powerful. And this was a comment from my client. He really wanted an art piece here, which I understand why. But now I feel like you have mirror, art, mirror, window, and then you have this little cove with the spa and you guys can see from this side this is the only empty wall in my photos it looked like it needed to be dressed up but now that i'm here i feel like i don't want to dress because now it's just going to be too much so let's take this guy back and this is where the elimination process begins <laughs> you start taking stuff back taylor i saved you from doing one art piece right here <laughs> oh did you <laughs> okay so all of this stuff is extra and something i see here that always is a little bit of a sensitive topic for me is what side to put the larger piece on and for me it's always the corner ending the room so it would be this corner right here because we have our wall and i would switch these around to this side so it's kind of like when you're coming in through here it gets slowly step elevated up so you're going like this like this and you have your wall here this way this piece right here is not here in the way such a large piece and then smaller items hidden so if you have that in your house search it around <laughs> i'm gonna say goodbye for now we're gonna wrap up get all the extras into the truck and i can't wait to give you the home tour once we are fully done here. I hope you guys enjoyed this process of putting this house all together because now you're gonna get the full tour of what actually happened as the end result. I hope you guys enjoy it and took a lot of notes along the way. See you guys in the next video.